the narrative of who immigrates, how they immigrate, why they immigrate, and what their lives are like is a really important one because it it tells the story of so many people. We bring in um, a mix of interesting, sometimes horrifying stories. Our stories are so diverse and so complicated and so nuanced. I always was along with girls and they were my friends. Very not queer. It's always used as a word for like lame or like so I was like, they'd be like, oh, if you feel that you're gay. And I'd be like, and I asked my mom, like, what does gay even mean? And she was like, <gasps> like, I was like, girl, like, what's, what, what's, what's happening? And so it was really interesting to kind of, so that was like my first even encounter with the word. People know, but they don't say it. They don't name it, you know? Yeah, he's sleeping or he's having his friend sleeping with him. Just don't be gay, like gay is not African, gay is not Christian or Muslim, or it's just like, just don't be gay, it's not the right thing to do. But when that law was passed, you know, it became kind of like, don't be gay because you can get arrested and you could actually be put in jail for about 14 years. Many people don't want to leave their homes. I would say that like many people don't want to leave. Um, leaving is not easy. Ignoring this country's like settler colonial history and sort of talking about immigration as if it just appeared um, is wild. There are a lot of folks who have been catalyzed, <laughs> um, for lack of a better word. A lot of Americans were, be were born with privilege, especially if they're white population, if they're not uh, uh, ethnic minorities or religious minorities, they were given with everything and now they have to realize they were taken, something was taken away from them. The world they lived in revealed itself. And you either take this opportunity and finally will be fighting alone with other people who were marginalized along the way, or you will be losing. You know, I ran away from people like this president in Uzbekistan, in Russia, let's say, and it was um, it's scary for a lot of people. I think part of what is has been really hard about this administration is that I think we're getting hit on so many fronts all the time. Now they're taking away children. Uh, they re uh, withdrawing DACA. They uh, withdrawn TBD status for Haitian people, Haitian people uh, who suffer from earthquake. Quake. Tomorrow it could be us, because uh, General Attorney Sessions already quoted Bible. How we move forward as a society and around the world in this, uh, it's something that we need to fight for. Not just like listen to like the directly impacted communities or like the um, the voices that tend to be pushed to the side like not just here but to actually like what does it really mean to believe those voices and like what is it yeah what does it mean to give full credit and to to those stories and voices and what is it how does that look like Sometimes you need situations like this to kind of push you to do the next thing, to actually be bold and to be brave. Do not forget I come from a very dictatorial regime, and for me, Trump is not a huge threat. The threat are people who have been in that way long before Trump came to the power. They just could not say, now they empowered all these Ku Klux Klans, white supremacists, and anti-immigrant uh, movements. But fight for that because it's a good time to start your uprising.